So are you ready for some geology? If no, get off the video. You're in the wrong place. If yes, then stick around because I'm about to teach you about faults. Yeah. And not your own personal faults. That's for you to solve with a therapist, but I'll be teaching you about faults in the ground. So my last geology video actually did pretty good by my standards. Now, to be fair, my standards aren't that high. I mean, it's only 200 views, but that's a lot to me, okay? That's twice the amount of subs I have, roughly. And as such, because I had a good time making that video as well, I'm going to make this into a series. Woo! Now, I don't have unlimited geology knowledge. I'm not a professor or anything. This was just one class I took as a required thing for my major, so I'm not an expert. I'm not a pro. But I liked it enough where I think I'm confident in transmitting that information to you. So if you have another series or another topic you think that would translate well into Minecraft and you want me to talk about, by all means, please leave a comment. I would love to look into it. So moving on to the topic of the video, as I said earlier, this is going to be about faults. The technical definition of a fault is a break in a rock along which there has been movement. There are other things called joints, but joints lack the movement which characterizes faults as a fault. And as such, I'm really not talking about them because they're just a break. It's like breaking your bone. It's not interesting. This is an example I made of a fault. It's like a cross cutting of a fault you'd find in the ground. So this is the fault itself. As you can see, it's like a break in a continued rock wall or rock line. Since you really can't get into the fine details with Minecraft, it's, you know, obviously going to be blocky. There wouldn't be these spaces. I just am doing that so you can see it a little bit easier rather than just having colored blocks. As you can see, what was once continuous rock has now been split. So a little bit of terminology I'm going to be using is foot wall and hanging wall. Now, this part is going to be the foot wall, and that one's the hanging wall. I always remember it by the one with the smaller angle at the bottom was going to be the foot wall, and the one with the larger angle was the hanging wall, but those names actually come from mining. So oftentimes along a fault, there's going to be a bunch of valuable minerals, and since humans want access to these, we're going to mine down along it. However, you can't just mine a hole straight down. It's going to be very, very hard to both navigate and do any mining work itself, like ex extraction. So the tunnel down would always be slanted following the fault itself, which would look something like this. Let's say this tunnel I just built follows a fault. So the floor underneath me is going to be the foot wall. And that's the part of the fault that the miners would be able to put their feet on and walk on. And as you can guess, the hanging wall would be over their heads and they would hang a lantern. So if we think of this fault like that mine I just was in, I would be walking down here on the foot wall and I'd be hanging my lantern on this one, on the hanging wall. I still think it's interesting how we haven't changed that terminology. We're still using miners. Okay, let me clarify. Miners, E-R, not miners, O-R. The Fair Labor Standard Act of 1938 banned the use of child labor in mines. Also, if any of you make this weird, I will find a way to ban you and chase you down. On to the next part of the video, there can be three types of fault, a normal fault, a reverse fault, and a transform fault. So a normal fault is when the foot wall moves up compared to the hanging wall. The wall with the smaller angle goes up, so this part stays in place or moves down. It depends on really how you imagine in your head, like you could imagine this is a stationary bit and this part goes up, or this is the part that stays still and that part just slides down. It doesn't matter as long as you remember, for the normal, the foot wall goes up. Then you have the reverse fault. As you can guess, it's the reverse of the normal. So for the reverse fault, the hanging wall moves up relative to the foot wall. And last but not least, you have a transform fault. As you can see, I'm doing this one from a different angle than those two. So the first two faults have their movement perpendicular to the horizon. So the horizon here, their movement up and down. This fault isn't like that. Transform faults work whenever two sides of a fault move in opposite directions, scraping against each other. I say opposite directions because that's a way to help you remember, but use that very loosely because not all of them move in opposite directions. There's some faults where both sides actually move in the same direction, just one side moves faster than the other, meaning that the one faster will constantly be scraping against the slow one. Before we move on from the faults completely, I'd like to brush over the reverse fault because there's actually a special variation of it, which I made right over here. This is called a thrust fault. And I'm not going to make any jokes about that. It's very, that's a very normal word, thrust. You use that in everyday conversations. Yes, yes, totally, yes. So thrust fault will be different than a reverse fault because the hanging wall, the angle at the base of the wall. So if you take this section and you look at the angle, pretend, okay, pretend they're not squares. Just imagine it's a line straight down. But if you look at the angle of that line, it's going to be a lot bigger than the angle of that wall. And as such, it has a really sharp edge that just thrusts out. I'm including it because, one, it's funny. Thrusty. <laughs> Two, 
there are some interesting examples that I want to touch on in a later video, but not this time because I'm running out of time. Now, if you've ever been in a geology class anytime from first grade to sixth grade, you probably knew all of this. And that's okay, because I frankly don't care. One, I just wanted to see how well I could pre present it in Minecraft, and I think I did pretty good. And two, it's also important that I make this video first because I plan on doing videos about all the other types of rock like igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And in metamorphic rocks in particular, they rely a lot on pressure. And as you can imagine, two big hunks of rocks pressing and scraping against each other causes a lot of pressure. So I'll be touching upon these concepts in that video and as such, you'll probably need to watch this one first as a refresher. Because let's be honest, if you're not going into a field that isn't directly related to geology, like half these concepts, they're gone. You move out, you get out of that classroom, you're like, bye, and it's all gone. You aim for an A, maybe a B, but when you go home, that knowledge is bonk, gone. If you're still here, thank you. You made it to the end of the video, and that's pretty cool. I hope this was mildly entertaining, even if the concepts were super simple, but you know, a refresher doesn't hurt. Can't give anything to you because I'm through a screen, but I can show you something cool. When I was building earlier, I found this magma pool, and it looks like a heart. Ta-da! And that's how I feel about all of you guys that make it to the end of the video. Big magma melting heart. Interpret that as you will. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm. And also, if you still want to support me and you still don't think I fumbled the bag with this video, please consider my Twitch. I'm trying to make it to 100 followers by the end of the year, and so far I'm failing miserably. So see ya. Bye.